Hello friends and welcome to another tutorial. Hi, my name is Chris Orwig and I am a Sony artisan, a photographer, author, and teacher. And in this tutorial, we're going to start off in Lightroom, then finish up in Photoshop. And I want to do a small start to finish project with this portrait that I captured here. And I want to do that in order to show you the whole workflow where we start in Lightroom, make some basic adjustments. I also want to brighten up her face in the area underneath the hat. And then in Photoshop, we'll crop and rotate and use Content Aware Fill to fill in a few of the gaps. Now, this image was captured with the Sony A9 and the 8514 G Master, one of my favorite combinations in the world. It's captured at F14, so it has this really nice feeling about it. All right, well, let's start off in the basic panel. And here we'll make some minor adjustments. I'm just going to brighten my exposure a little bit and contrast. Drop those highlights down. The hat up there was too bright, so I need to bring in or bring those down. Boost my shadows here a touch and then add just a little bit of clarity. All right, well, so far so good. Next step will be to make two different selective adjustments. First with the radial filter. With the radial filter, typically you want to go to the effect pull down menu and just choose something, really anything that will zero out all of the other sliders then start to craft what you want to do. I want to brighten things up a little bit, a little bit of boost in my shadows, maybe a touch of clarity and a little bit of saturation too. Then click and drag over the area of the image and you can rotate that by hovering near that corner point. And what I'm looking to do is to try to have something here where I can brighten up this part of the image. I need to bring the highlights down, shadows go up, highlights go down, a little touch of contrast. A little bit of sharpness in here too. I want to sharpen that up just a touch as well. And saturation, I'm going to bring back down. I didn't like where it was. And then you can always click on this toggle switch here and that will show you the before and after. The feather value is the softness of the edge. And so I want a lot of feather on this one because I want it to be really nice and soft. You can always move it around, see how it's affecting the different areas. But basically I want to draw the viewer into her face. After you've done that, what I like to do is to collapse all these controls to the amount slider, then decrease this value. It's almost like decreasing the intensity of a layer in Photoshop, because what often happens, at least to me, is that I overdo it. And then if I back it off a little bit, I realize, yep, that's so much better. And so that is adjustment number one or selective adjustment number one. Second one is the background looks a little too gray to me. It's almost like I lost some of my color and that's because it was slightly overcast and there were some trees that had some gray tones in them. So I'll add one more adjustment, this time using the graduated filter. And here, go ahead and go to that pull down menu, choose something like temperature. I'm going to change this, so I'm gonna make this yellow. It will be too strong, but sometimes having an adjustment which is too strong can help you to find out where you need to place the adjustment, if that makes sense. And so here I'll go ahead and Decrease this just a little bit, maybe add a little bit of red in there, something like that. And then just modify this a little bit more here. Sorry, I'm eyeballing it. It's hard to talk and to do this at the same time. Now that we have that, one of the things I'm seeing is that I feel like it needs some green up there as well. So the yellow or the brown kind of yellow color is better than gray, but it isn't necessarily it isn't necessarily right. So I need to fix that. So one more adjustment, we'll grab the brush. This will be another chance to show one more thing here. And with this brush, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my color and I'm gonna choose a nice bright green, desaturate. And with this brush, if we go down to our controls, I have a nice small brush here, low flow value, lots of feather. And let me zoom in on this so we can see this part. And what I'm gonna do here with this one is I'm just gonna paint in some green and I'm gonna to try to follow what we have in regards to the rest of the image where we have some of this green background and it kind of mixes in with these other colors. So you can see how I'm sort of mixing in a little bit of green and I'm doing that so that it's not quite as noticeable in regards to the brown. And I think that kind of works. Lots of feather, just kind of soft little brush strokes of a little bit of touch of green in there. And then if the green isn't right, well, you can always go back here and we could choose different green, maybe a little brighter, maybe a little more yellow in it. Nah, I think it was pretty good right where it was, somewhere in there. 
All right, fine tuning it. We got it. Now we're ready to go to Photoshop. So let's hit Command E on a Mac, Control E on Windows. What that does is it takes all that we've done in Lightroom, sends it over to, to Photoshop. And now in Photoshop, what I want to do is rotate this image and then fill in a few gaps. So I'm going to unlock the background layer. I'm going to call this BG for background. Next, I'll press Command-T on a Mac, Control-T on Windows, and I'm going to free transform this just by hovering you know, over the corner point or close to it and rotating. And I want to do that because I feel like she was sort of leaning too far that way, so I'm rotating it like this. Now when I do that, invariably we're going to get some gaps. We have gaps where the hat is, the sky, down here. How do we fix that? Well, you may have seen this in one of my other tutorials, but what we do is we use the magic wand, we turn contiguous off, and we click on one of those transparent areas. That will select all of them with one click. Then we go to select, and we choose modify and expand. And here we need to expand this anywhere from 5 to 20 pixels. It really depends upon the image and the edge. But basically, we need something so that that selection is a little bit bigger than being right on the edge. And I'm going to actually do that one again. So this will be a total of 20 pixels. So it's kind of covering that. And this will be difficult to see, but let me zoom in so you can see this. Can you see how the selection area right now goes over that little edge? That will ensure better results. All right, now that we've done that, I want to duplicate this layer so I can show you the before and after. And I'm going to call this one Content Aware Fill because that's what we'll be using. So we go to the Edit pull-down menu and choose Fill. We want to select Content Aware and Color Adaptation turned on. Leave that on by default and click OK. What will happen is this will tell Photoshop to analyze the surrounding areas and then make its best guess at filling them in. So let's take a look. So over here on this side, we can see how it created more of the jacket. Awesome, that was great. And then down here, how did it do? Created more of the jacket. It's fine. I don't need to do anything. The hat, it's pretty good. It's just a little bit off, so I can fix that. So I'll create a new layer. Press S to choose the clone stamp tool and sample my area and just fix that up a little bit. Often there are little fix-ups that you'll need to do, and then this area up top is perfect. So it helped me to rotate that. So rather than have the original kind of lean, now I have something which I think is better. Now that I see it like this, I want to crop off some of the top. I don't think we need all that top there. So I'll go ahead and bring that down a little bit too. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. And there you have it, a start to finish project where we started inside of Lightroom, sent it over to Photoshop in order to finish it off, and took advantage of that content-aware fill technique, which is really helpful when you need to fill in some gaps in your photographs. And on that note, that is a wrap. And thanks for joining me in this tutorial. Hope to see you in another one. And more importantly, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye for now.